I would seriously doubt that there was any situation comedy, whether it was one of the lousy ones or the delightful ones, that accurately reflected home life in America. The ones that were very pleasant and intended not to be very funny, nor, nor did they even try. I mean, nobody ever tuned in Father Knows Best to die laughing. For that, you had Sid Caesar, you know, or whoever you laughed at in those days. But uh, there was a sweetness to uh, those, some of those family-type shows of the 50s. And I think what they probably did was make many American teenagers, teenagers dissatisfied with their actual mothers or fathers. The mother wasn't as adorable as Donna Reed or as funny as Lucy or as cute and dopey as Gracie Allen or whatever. Mom was bugged because the washing machine had broken again or Daddy came home drunk or whatever the real-life problems were. And uh, I think most Americans of my generation literally came to a moment when they actually said, quote, I wish life could be more like the movies. Even when people died in the movies or were blown up by a bomb in World War II or whatever, there was a kind of a glamour and glory to it all. That isn't how life is. You know? And uh, again, as regards the TV sitcoms, that was never life. It was a distraction from life. It used the characters of life, the mom, the dad, the baby, the teenager. But it just did cute and consequential things with them for the most part. I remember once... Uh, hearing about a little girl who had seen Gregory Peck in uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. And I remember, I don't know where I heard this, some discussion among young people that he was a good role model. They wanted their daddies to be like them. And occasionally I would get mail from people who only saw the, the nice, <laughs> genial, funny side of me on television. Uh, young people who would say it was very sad, in effect, or sometimes very close to these words, I wish you were my daddy or uh, I wish Daddy were like you, or I wish Mommy would marry somebody like you. A lot of people throw themselves into what they see on television or in my generation on films, and some of that is, is disturbing. I, I wrote a book a few months ago called Dumpth, about the, the dumbing of America, you might say, and uh, Robert Young, to refer again to him, after having been for many years a major film star and then having done Father Knows Best, when later in the 60s he did Marcus Welby, M.D., got thousands of letters every week from people seeking medical advice. Dear Dr. Welby, my shoulder hurt. I find that very depressing. Today, you can deal with a much wider range of subject matter, even deal responsibly. I, mean, I don't just mean do dirty jokes about it or something. Uh, in those days, you wouldn't have ever seen a drama about Alzheimer's disease or, or, or cancer or that sort of thing. Uh, child molestation. I mean, the, the question even, never even came up. It's not that there was censorship. The writers themselves uh, snuffed out any such thought at the moment it emerged from their conscious to subconscious, and it, the issue, as I say, never came up. But uh, I approve of the, the greater range of freedom now. Unfortunately, as man always does with freedom, he abuses it. And so now we have all kinds of verbal filth and vulgarity and obscenity and, and classless, moronic giggling and people going, whoo, just because somebody said a dirty word. We've really, uh, you know, eroded around the edges on a lot of fronts. I don't think that the great TV audience, and of course we're not talking about one thing, it was 419 little audiences all scotch taped together, but however you look at it, I don't think that large audience was consciously looking for anything. First of all, they saw a glamour in television that can never be recaptured. Subtly, a wonder in your home, there was a piece of furniture that talked and lit up and showed dancers and birds flying and stuff. That was an incredible achievement. Now, to today's seven-year-old, the television set is no more remarkable than his toothbrush. It's just one of the things available to him. If it burns out, he gets bugged. It, when we were seeing it come on, I mean, those of us who were already in our 20s and 30s, we were astonished, and, and rightly so. It happens now in about 20 minutes. At least it took us five years to lose the glamour. Now man's on the moon. No kidding. Hey, that's great. Let's have lunch. You know, uh, we're, we're very jaded and sophisticated now, at least on the surface. But uh, I don't believe, to repeat, that the audience then was demanding anything. They were accepting everything. Uh, and when you look back at how terrible, I mean, in just terms of simple quality, the great bulk of television was then you marvel that you could have an audience that, <laughs> that by the millions would put up with that. Uh, we can all repeat the instances of excellence, but they were very few in number.